Well, hello. It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks I've been using throughout the week. So let's dive into it. <laughs> if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And this week I've got a little treat for you. I uh, had been saving up this footage since uh, summer. Uh, during the summer I went to Fargo and uh, toured Fargo's parks because uh, I was in Fargo for a week for a class. So rather than shopping or whatever else I could have done, I toured parks. So uh, this will be Lindenwood Park. It's located near the interstate and uh, I found quite a surprise there that makes this a suitable Veterans Day video. Uh, I am sorry that it's not appearing on Veterans Day because I had the perfect shot this year. Veterans Day was Friday, but you know what? As you can see, I'm late with this anyway. So, uh, yeah, let's dive into the pens and we'll take a look at the park and the veterans. Okay, so these are the fountain pens and inks I've been using this week. From left to right, we have a Senator Windsor, a Pilot Justice 95, Lamy 2000, Waterman Karen, Senator Long Blind Cap, because I don't know its actual model number, uh, Senator Matt Grand Silver, because that's what it was sold as, and I don't know its actual model name, and a Twisby Draco. Just to take a closer look, let's get a little light up here. So this is the Senator Windsor. It's a very attractive blue finish. Uh, has a little branding there. An ordinary steel iridium point nib. Feels good in the hand, writes nicely. You know, not exactly screaming with excitement, but it's a good pen. Uh, this is the Pilot Justice. I like the understated branding again. It has kind of a flexible nib and it has this cantilever on it to help it. You can adjust it from hard to soft writing. We have my beloved, very beloved, Lamy 2000. Semi-hooded nib. And I just refilled it again tonight because I keep running out of ink in it. Because I probably use this pen more than any other. I have a Waterman Karen in the Amber Marine finish. Has a nice inlaid nib. Senator Long Blind Cap. Why so named? Because it has the longest blind cap on any pen I've ever seen in my life. So we got this metal blind cap over a fairly ordinary plastic body. The nib is, you know, just a good writer type of nib. Beside it is a very similar Senator matte gray and silver, which is how it was sold to me. I don't know what it was actually called. It looks more black than gray to me. Uncap it. I think it has a very similar nib design. It's almost all, all uh, sorry, it's almost also... <laughs> Let's try that a third time in a row. It's almost, all, it's also almost out of ink. There we go. Finally said it. And finally, we have the Twisby Draco. Which uh, some people say that the nib is too small for the body. I say size isn't everything. So we'll start with the Senator Windsor. I don't know the nib size. I don't see one written on the... Well, yes I do. It's a medium. Did not see that earlier. Uh, the ink in it is diamine. 
Damson, which is just kind of a dusky dark purple. So I've talked about, you know, inks that I'm going to keep, inks that I'm, you know, when I use them up, I use them up. I like this one, but not enough that I'll ever buy another bottle. And it's a nice small bottle, so, uh, you know, it won't be too long before I use it up. And it won't be missed. Uh, the pen it's in, this Senator Windsor, is actually a very nice pen. Uh, nice to hold. You know, nothing amazing, just nice. Works well, it's just kind of a daily writer pen. And we need those. My Pilot Justice 95 is a little more than that. This is kind of a fun pen. It's a good writer pen. So I have a fine nib in it, and the ink in it is Deotrementis. Which is an ink brand you just don't hear people talk about much. But they're good. Mint Turquoise. Um, Hemingway Jones had a made an interesting comment on a video of his I watched. He doesn't really watch other pen YouTubers and I will admit that that's true. Uh, you know, I, I will watch select videos of other YouTubers, you know, if they have a topic I'm interested in. For the most part, I have found that I don't watch them. Used to watch them a lot, so I don't know why I don't, but I don't. This is Lamy 2000. I'm just going to dial the exposure down just a tiny bit, or, or do this. There, or both. Hey, or there we go. So this is the Lamy 2000. Ooh, wow, that... <laughs> Don't do that again. So this is the Lamy 2000. Um, my daily writer pen. This one has a fine nib, and I'm working on using up some Aurora Black. I think, just judging by the amount left, I may have this one used up by the end of January. Then I can go on and target another black ink. You know, I'm just knocking them down color by color. That's what I decided to do. Started on smaller bottles, but Aurora Black, I had actually uh, one big bottle and two half bottles, so... Uh, because they, they sent them to me when I bought some Aurora pens. Sorry, I'm working on them. This is the Waterman Karen in the Amber Marine finish. A little condensation there. I think it's condensation. Let's find out when I wipe it off here. Okay, yeah, no ink came off, so. I'm out of the idea tell that cloth. <laughs> so, Waterman Karen. I, uh, I was able to find a broad nib for it, and the ink is one of those inks I actually will replace because I like it. Roar and Klingner's Alt Goldgrun. Just a very unique color. I got a letter written in it once, and I just like, yeah, got to have that ink. I want it. And it has not been a disappointment. And Roar and Cleaner is a good ink brand. So they have that going for them too. I just happen to think the white balance might be off tonight because I set my white balance without this overhead light. But uh, I liked the effect of it having it on as far as shadows go here. So I may have to leave it. So this is Senator Long Blind Cap. Probably from the 60s or 70s. Of course, we'll put the name in quotes. Because I don't know actually what it's called. 
And the ink in it is Jirban Lidete, which is an example of what happens when you work through a certain color family. Uh, I have two bottles of brown ink left. This one, and then one that's a Noodler's Whaleman Sepia, which uh, Whaleman Sepia is weird, and I won't put it in the same category at all. So, I like this one out of the browns that I had. Well, one was discontinued. Uh, it was an Orochizuko of some kind that was discontinued. And uh, the other one was just meh. So this is probably my favorite out of the brown inks that I had. This is another Senator pen, lacking a name, so I make one up. I need to get out Senator Crack Blind Cap again. So Senator Matte Gray and Silver. Very comfortable as a daily writer. I actually like it better than Senator uh, Crack Blind Cap. The ink in it is a Roshizuku. Asagao, which is just a nice dark gray colored ink, or sorry, a dark blue colored ink. Uh, I have a lot more blue inks to work through, so I haven't really set on a favorite other than, of course, gotta have my bottle of Parker Quink washable blue, but as far as what else, or, you know, do I want a dark blue and a medium blue? don't know this is a nice color though i do enjoy it and finally the twisby draco i don't know why it's writing so dark i was writing with this pen earlier today this has a broad nib on it and the ink in it is iroshizuku I forget. Kirisami. So I have this bottle of gray and another bottle of gray yet to use up. And then I will be free to buy my gray ink, my beloved Fuyu Syogun. So kind of looking forward to using this puppy up. This isn't a bad gray, I just like the Fuyu Shogun a lot better. So those are the pens and inks I've been using this week. Kind of political with all those senators. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you into Lindenwood Park. We're going to look around. We'll see uh, a famous person who's honored in the park. And then we're going to take a look at a very unique memorial that I did not expect to find in Lindenwood Park. So let's take a look at it. So back in August, I was in Fargo for a class I was taking, and I decided, you know, with my evenings free and I'm in the big city, what am I going to do for fun? So I decided to visit some parks in Fargo. Uh, this is Lindenwood Park, and it's along the Red River and uh, has some surprises in it. Of course, a big open grassy area with sport sporting fields like baseball and soccer and all that, a lot of flowers. Uh, surprisingly a campground in it, which I didn't expect. <laughs> and of course it's eastern North Dakota, so they think this is a steep grade. Uh, come west sometime, you'll see it's not. But a lot of very extensive walking paths, including along the Red River. And which you can see here. Now, uh, while I'm here on the Red River, it's worth noting that the Red River is well known for flooding. And uh, you can see the ground still a little bit chopped up from the flooding that they had this spring. But here's part of the story. Roger Maris Drive. That was the name on the path along the river that I took back. Now as I got sort of back, you know, along the river, I noticed this bridge something funny about this pedestrian bridge well it's designed so they can lift it up 
when the river floods. So then the bridge is not damaged, and then they just snork it back in place when the flood's over. And there's gates so that, you know, people don't try to cross it when there's no bridge there, I guess. But very nice bridge, and like I said, thought out in terms of what do we do when it floods, because we know it's going to flood. But now, I'm across the border, and I'm in, I'm in Minnesota. In Gooseberry Falls, or sorry, Gooseberry Park, in Moorhead. I don't know what this thing was. I Something to do with bicycles. I don't know what it was, but I had to film it. Um, there was a p playground there. Of course, I'm not going to be the weirdo standing there filming kids, so I didn't. Um, there was a nice dolphin sculpture near it. Um, there are no dolphins in the Red River. And there was this maze thing that looks like it has a lot of local art decorating it, so I'd like to know the story of that. A very nice picnic pavilion. Very nice picnic pavilion, actually. And then we're headed back to the North Dakota side of the border, because honestly, the Gooseberry Falls thing was a bonus. I wasn't expecting to go over there. Uh, but there's a memorial in the park to, for Roger Maris, a famous baseball player who actually graduated from high school in Fargo. Uh, I'm not a baseball guy, so I couldn't tell you why he's famous. He just is. And why I'm filming this, there's a memorial to the veterans who served on submarines during the Second World War in Lindenwood Park. Veterans from North Dakota. And also uh, a memorial to one of the 52 submarines that was lost in the Second World War. The USS Rabalo. Uh, apparently each lost submarine was assigned to a state to make a memorial and very few made the memorial. And the story of the USS Rabalo is worth telling. But in 1944 the USS Rubala was on her third patrol in the Pacific Ocean during again the Second World War. Uh, it was headed to the South China Sea. Now the Part of its transit was through the Makaskar Strait and the Balabek Strait. Uh, the Balabek Strait was heavily mined. Uh, it was scheduled to arrive uh, J July 6th at the, at the station, where it was supposed to overnight for a while. Uh, but on July 2nd, the Robalo sighted a Fuso-class battleship with a two-destroyer escort near Borneo. And it was never heard from again. Now, the story continues because on August 2nd, a note was handed from the cell window of the Kampe Tail Military Prison, a Japanese POW camp, to an American POW there. Uh, according to this note, the Rabala was sunk by enemy mines, and four men were able to swim ashore where they were later captured. On August 15th, these four men were evacuated by Japanese destroyer and were never heard from again. Uh, the fate of them and this Japanese destroyer is unknown. And the wreckage of the submarine was found in May 2019. So I thought that story was worth sharing as we remember our veterans on November 11th. And uh, nice to see them remembered here in Fargo, North Dakota. Well, thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.